Hello, my name is Dr. Ellen Rowley and I'm an architectural historian and I have contributed to this wonderful volume, Modern Ireland in 100 Artworks, with five essays or entries on architectural examples, buildings or architectural situations. And I've chosen um, to read from maybe a less loved, more overlooked example from the mid 1960s. That is Cork County Hall, the skyscraper, skyscraper in Cork. Um, and we assigned the year 1965 to this building. Um, it's particularly interesting because um, it throws up a whole load of issues around how we live with older buildings. Older buildings that are not old enough to be really valued for their historic relevance, if you like, or significance. And yet um, they're too old to function successfully in the 21st century. So what we're thinking about with this is how do we adapt these types of buildings without losing their essence? Though finished in 1968, the building is being conceived of um, in 1965. So it's a real uh, local landmark uh, development of the mid 1960s. And um, we also, in this entry, I was encouraged to bring in um, the sculptor, uh, a little bit about the sculptor Ushin Kelly, or rather, his bronze figures, um, two working men, which were made um, in the in the 1960s, late 50s, early 60s. Paula Murphy will tell us more about that, uh, no doubt. And uh, those sculpture, those uh, figures were made for Liberty Hall, which is the Dublin skyscraper, but they were moved and they ended up settling in Cork. So there's there's kind of two stories here. So there you are. Let me begin. Cork County Hall, 1965, by the architect Patrick McSweeney. From its inception, Cork County Hall was designed to reflect the spirit of the age, architecture as both an agent and a symbol of civil and political change. As it soared 211 feet above pavement towards the Cork sky, the bombast of its rectangular bulk and grey concrete cladding gradually diminished. Two working men, hewn of bronze by sculptor Ushin Kelly, stared upwards at Munster's first skyscraper. Perfect cork, every man. They gazed in apparent admiration at their county council's new headquarters. The building represented a radical architectural solution to 1960s Ireland. At 15 storeys high, with rooftop pavilion and viewing terrace beyond, Cork County Hall belonged to an elitist club of tall Irish buildings. Furthermore, from its official opening in 1968 until 2008, it was Ireland's tallest building. In the past decade, the County Hall has been significantly altered in a revamp by Shea Cleary Architects completed in 2006. And while it occupies a similar skyline profile, its idiosyncratic concrete cladding has been replaced by state-of-the-art glazing technology. And the tower is now joined by a 21st century four-storey atrium. Of course, with each generation comes perceived new needs. And when the local authority in Cork was planning a headquarters in the mid-1960s, it sought to replace the piecemeal council offices that were scattered through Cork City in small individual buildings. So the language was about obsolescence and the potential of a greenfield site, of automobile access and vertical circulation. The county architect, Patrick McSweeney, who was born in 1918 and who died in 1994, decided that the solution was a tower, a tower that stacked the multifunctions of vocational education, health authority and rural development. It rose from a modernist romance of greenery two miles outside the city. 
Cork County Hall was a highly symbolic and adventurous project underpinned by the spirit of the age and the prospect of its function, modernising local government in a modernising 1960s Ireland. As the architect McSweeney eulogised upon completion, quote, this building would promote its own way in its own way, the kind of confidence and enthusiasm that is an essential part of a developing community." Unquote. The building's modernism was softened by textured surfaces and decorative elements. Much of this formalism, from the remarkable concrete tracery covering the towers glazing externally, to the internal exposed brick walls, blockwork floors and chevron pattern ceilings points to Cork County Hall as a typically mid-century modernist building, that is 1950s and early 1960s architecture sought, sought to harness technology and prioritise functionalism while referencing local or regional tastes. So it's a more touchy-feely version of modernism. Reception desks were placed on every floor to minimise public circulation, yet car drivers were welcomed and children were advised to visit and learn about the machinery of local government. This was a new, monumental and somehow permeable civic architecture. Cork County Hall's dominant aspect was its towering height in an otherwise low-lying, ground-scraping built environment. Through the 1960s, tall buildings were a source of anxiety for urban Ireland. Dull debates reveal politicians discussing their merits in the face of a housing crisis that culminated in the contemporaneous Ballymun part high-rise housing development on the edge of North Dublin. Tall buildings soon were perceived either as a crisis architecture or a wasteful alien solution for corporate or semi-state bodies. Indeed, it is height in and with all its connotations which Kelly's enduring sculpture addressed. Originally made for Dublin's iconic skyscraper, Liberty Hall, in 1958 to 1965, two working men was hailed a traffic hazard and the sculpture was rejected. Dublin's public art loss was Cork's gain, as the two figures were taken to a small public park opposite Patrick McSweeney's tower. They were temporarily removed during the building's recent millennial refurbishment from 2000 to 2006, which sadly and controversially stripped off the tower's concrete tracery. Today, Cork's bronze every men are back, staring up at a less exciting, but nonetheless impressive Irish skyscraper. <laughs>